Hello and welcome back to the watch guys. I hope you are safe and well. Well, it's the morning of the 30th of March 2022 and the Watches and Wonders show has just kicked off in Geneva. As you can see, I'm here to bring you our Who Am I Trying to Kid? Obviously, I'm not in Geneva at all. I'm at home, but there's still a trove of new watches to enjoy. So in an impromptu special episode, I'm going to react in real time as I discover all the watches that are going to be announced this morning. From the likes of Rolex, Patek Philippe, Vacheron, Constantin, in fact, all the big guns in the watch world who are out in force in a desperate fight for your cash and to outdo each other. What are the immediate highlights, but perhaps more importantly, which are the ones that I want in my collection. So without further ado, let's do this. So here we are then, it's a new week and it's watches and wonders in Geneva and it promises to be a smorgasbord of incredible delights from the watch industry's biggest brands. I'm pretty excited to see what new models we've got coming up and obviously because I am a complete compulsive watch collector then there may well be some pieces that we're going to see today that will find its way into my collection and therefore onto this channel fairly quickly. Therefore we're going to go through each brand as it makes its announcement and we're going to look through the models and also if we can try and catch up on perhaps some of the watches that have been discontinued but that's going to be quite difficult because they do not point it out. Before we get started a quick wristwatch check and under the grey jumper this week I have Patek Philippe Grand Complication. This is a chronograph perpetual calendar and it's reference 5271. This is a 2020 watch in platinum. It weighs 135 grams and as you can see it features quite the most gorgeous black dial with diamond hour markers and it also has baguette diamonds around the case. In terms of watches it's a real statement piece. So now let's get straight into the new watch releases and first up of course it's Rolex. Now, if you remember, Rolex kicked off with a teaser video talking about going up into the sky and skywards and all this sort of weird nonsense. There was a great deal of speculation about what Rolex was going to announce this year. Many people believe there was going to be a new Air King, and that's what the skywards referred to. And also many people thought there was going to be some kind of strange green black or green grey or green red sprite type watch. But judging by what's just come through on my screen this morning, I don't think anyone expected it to be a left-handed GMT Master II. <laughs> but that is exactly what we've got. That cracks me up. As you can see here, what we've got is a GMT Master II with a green GMT hand, a green and black ceramic bezel, but just look at it. For some unbelievable reason, Rolex has decided to move the crown and the date window and Cyclops over to the left of the watch. <laughs> Are you serious? This makes no sense to me whatsoever. No one is crying out for this. It means it looks completely different to all the others in the range and if you put them in a collection. And I just find this the weirdest move that I think Rolex has done in a long time. I don't understand it at all. And as a result of this configuration, I'm gonna call this new GMT master the lefty. And as everyone knows, no one likes a lefty. There's an argument that says if you wear your watch on your left wrist, which a lot of people do, then putting the crown on the left means that it doesn't sort of encroach or impact on your wrist when you flex it. I guess that is an argument, but then if that was the case, surely all the watches would do that. But to me, flipping it like this on the dial, it's a definite no from me. I have literally no interest in owning this watch. It doesn't interest me at all. I think it's very silly. I really don't understand what's going on here. So what are the other headlines from Rolex? Well, as predicted by a lot of people, there is a new Air King, but as you can see here, although it has been redesigned and there's a new movement, it looks pretty much the same. And that means it looks pretty dull. And that means no one is still going to want one. So a complete, missed opportunity in my opinion by Rolex for the Air King. This was the chance to rejuvenate Air King perhaps like it did 
with the Oyster Perpetuals. And you basically spent all that time creating a watch which looks essentially the same and no one wanted it then. Not a great plan. Other watches popping up here, we've got uh, quite an obvious move actually. We have the yellow gold 42 sized Yacht Master on the Oyster Flex. So if you remember before Rolex had the white gold version of the 42, now you've got a yellow gold, Yornarama City. And today Rolex has also just announced a gemstone version of the Yacht Master 40, which is festooned with colored diamonds. Nothing says voyages of the open sea more than precious stones. And obviously this is a very strange one to do the gemstone treatment to. And we also have some quite interesting funky diamond dials on the date justs, particularly the small sizes. Now what's interesting here is that there's quite a lot of action going on under the surface. Rolex has just announced that the day date 40, the platinum one, is going to get a fluted bezel. Woohoo! But that's not the whole story. If you actually look at the range, which you really need to do when you get to Rolex, because you've got to go through and scrutinize what was there before, what there is now. The interesting thing that pops up is that actually Rolex has added loads of new day dates into the range really quietly. In fact, I could probably do an entire episode just about Rolex and probably just about Rolex day date. Maybe I should do that. Let me know in the comments if you want me to. But one thing that has slipped under the radar, no one's discovered yet because they're all looking at the lefty is that finally Rolex has done a full yellow gold day date on a presidential with a onyx black dial. And this is game changing for me. It's something I've been telling Rolex to do for years and now finally it's done it. So I'm incredibly happy about that. I've already been in touch with my authorized dealer and said, please get me one of those when it comes out. I've always loved the historic onyx style Rolex day dates and this one has just arrived. So I'm really excited about that. And also on the day date, you'll see that there is a quite sublime plain green dial, which is very much evoking those stellar dials of old. Unfortunately for me, it's only got Roman numerals on it instead of hour markers, so I don't really like it that much. But in terms of a color popping off of the gold, it's superb. And if you look at the day date range, there are quite a lot of new models that have been inserted. Strangely though, they don't seem to have new movements. In fact, when it comes to the platinum day date, which I have a particular affinity with, I stared at the specs of the old model and I looked at the brand new for 22 model and I can't see any difference whatsoever. So if any of you can tell me what the difference between the new 2022 model day date platinum is with the old one, I'd be very much obliged. And now that we've just looked at the new Rolex, how about some shock news about discontinuation? Yes, that's right. I've just been looking through the Rolex range and I've just noticed that it is discontinued the Oyster Perpetual Turquoise, Coral and Yellow. Those colors have been stopped already. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me! It's only been just over a year, hasn't it? It's absolutely insane. It makes my blood boil because of course, Hardly anyone's had a chance to get those watches yet. They've all gone to like scalpers and flippers who have grabbed hold of them and are trying to make a fortune out of them. But the people that are actually sitting here waiting to try and get them and to add them to their collection. <laughs> Rolex, what the hell are you doing? You've absolutely stiffed your loyal customers. The green one is still for sale. So if you haven't got that, as I haven't, then at least you can still try and add that. But the other ones, all gone already. The rumors are true, they weren't gonna last that long. Thanks a bunch, Rolex. And now it's time to look at Patek Philippe. Of course, you know I'm a big Patek fan, and actually Patek has announced this morning 11 new watches. Some of them very interesting indeed. So let's just take a quick look. And as you can see there, right at the top, we've got this very strange new vintage feel that Patek has added to the 5326G and the 5226G. Now these two watches are very interesting because you've got this sort of almost burnt lava texture on the dial. You've got aged numerals and you've also got that sort of Clos de Paris hobnail effect around the actual case. So 
Patek has put quite a lot of effort into this, you can tell, and created, I think, quite a harmonious vintage looking watch. It looks unlike anything else in Patek's range, and therefore I quite applaud that. Now we've got something interesting. If you remember, Patek discontinued the Salmon Dial Grand complication, but here we are back again with two new Salmon Dials at a much lower price point. You've got the 5320G, which is the perpetual calendar, and you've also got the 5172G, which is the chronograph, but perhaps a bit of a kick in the teeth if you own the original. Also from Patek, we've got two new green dial watches, as if we couldn't get more of those. In this case, you've got the 5270P, which is of course the spiritual successor to the 5170P that I've got. And you've also got the 5205R, which is rose gold, but then with a green tinged dial. And that one really does look super classy. Patek has also brought out three new world timers. So the first one, the 5231G, is a white gold version of the rose gold previous enamel dial world time. And looky, looky what we've got here, we've got the 5230P, which is the replacement for the white gold blue dial world timer that was discontinued earlier. And if you remember, that's the one that got away for me. I was hoping to get one, but unfortunately I didn't. So now Patek has brought out the platinum version with a dial that actually I don't like quite as much. But Patek always pulls out the stops and brings out the big daddies. And this year is no exception because what we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is the 5374 300P platinum minute repeater perpetual calendar and this is an absolute animal it's one of those watches that only the super super vips will ever see you've got a beautiful blue dial you've got diamonds all over the place you've also got an incredible minute repeater with cathedral gongs and if that wasn't enough it looks like there's sapphire hour markers i mean wow not something I'm interested in, I have to say, but as a piece of hoot horology, wow, wow, wow. And now something's just appeared that I didn't expect at all, but I think it may well be my favourite of all the watches discussed today. Vacheron Constantin have just announced a brand new version of the historic 222 in full yellow gold. And as you can see, this is stunning. It's a super thin watch. It's effortlessly elegant. It's a tribute to that 1977 original, and it ties in with the 222nd anniversary of Le Grand Maison. And it's a new 37 millimeter, 18 carat yellow gold watch featuring the in-house caliber self-winding 2455-2 movement. This, my friends, is the one I have to own. It is absolutely fantastic. Just look at it. And this, if I can wangle it somehow, Ed, if I can somehow get it, this will be the second Vacheron Constantin that I own. And my goodness, would I be a proud owner of this one. So yeah, look out for this, folks. This is stunning. I've not really seen it reported about too much, but this is big news. I actually was trying to get an original 222 in my early watch collecting days. Never quite got round to it, but um, woo, yep, yeah, uh, yeah, yes please, yes please. Now it may come a bit of a surprise to you, but I've sort of fallen out of love a bit with Tudor recently. A lot of its releases over the last few years, I've not really been that excited about. I didn't really like that experimental one. I wasn't a big fan of those last chronographs. And I have to say, I wasn't that interested about what Tudor was gonna do this year. However, one does stand out and it's this. This is the Black Bay Pro. It's a 39 millimeter steel watch. It's got an in-house GMT movement. And as you can see, it looks almost identical to the Steve McQueen Rolex Explorer. It looks pretty good on either the steel bracelet, the fabric strap, or the NATO. And although I don't think I'm actually gonna get one, nice work, Tudor. Just had news of this in from Oris. Now, Oris is a manufacturer that I really enjoy and they're great people to deal with. And it has just announced the Pro Pilot X Calibre 400. It comes in a super, super vivid salmon color, a 
dark blue and a really, really super cool octophenicimal baiting grey silver dial. They are really nice actually, all in titanium. They're 39 millimeters. And this is really taking on sports watches head on. So this to me is very much Oris looking to the future. And I think they look really super good. I've been a bit quiet for the last year or so with Grand Seiko, which is a brand that I own many watches of. Uh, there just seems to be a constant barrage of special editions and new variants. It's difficult to keep track. However, two Grand Seikos have been announced just a few minutes ago, and they are incredible. I bet they're going to be super expensive. I don't think there's any details of that yet, but let's have a quick look at them. You've got, first of all, the Kodo Constant Force Tourbillon. Kodo, of course, are those super powerful drummers. And this is an astounding looking open skeletal type Grand Seiko. I mean, just look at it. It's Grand Seiko's first mechanical complication. It's unfortunately limited to only 20 units, so the chances of you even seeing one of these watches is near impossible, let alone ever owning one. But as a technical exercise and a range topper, whew, yeah, I mean, it's pretty awesome. And another one that's really grabbed my attention is this. This is the White Lion. Again, sadly, it's limited to just five pieces, which is silly really because it is a stunning looking thing it's really cool and unfortunately you're never ever going to have one or even see it and as you can see there it's festooned with diamonds it's it's all white it's stunning really absolutely stunning but uh, it's definitely not coming to my collection because there is no way i'll be able to secure one which is a real shame. Quick word about Laurent Ferrier, which is a watch brand that I own one model of, and it is becoming increasingly hard to get hold of its watches. It's just announced this morning a really lovely classic origin. So this is a blue version of its classic origin, which is the round cased Laurent Ferrier, as opposed to their other signature oblong. And this is a really beautiful, dainty watch. So it's a blue opaline dial. It is a 40 millimeter case. It's made of titanium and I guess it's available to order now, but I have to say very classy looking. It's, it's basically the round version of the micro rotor square watch that I've got and that I've done an episode on. So there you go, folks. That completes my initial review of the new watches from Watches and Wonders. I appreciate there are many brands and watches that I may have missed or that they haven't told me about. So let's do a quick recap then. Out of all those watches that I've seen so far, which are the ones that I will definitely be seeking to add to the Watch Guys collection and therefore you will see on this channel. First of all, the Rolex Daydate 40, the one with the black onyx dial, that is an absolute must. Number two, I've got the Vacheron Constantin 222, the solid gold one, absolutely fantastic. Number three, the Oris Pro Pilot X, the one with the grey dial. Number four, the Patek Philippe 5226G Calatrava with the new vintage dial. And actually number five, a surprise new entry, but announced quite recently, I am pretty much taken with the Omega Speedmaster Moonshine with either the green or yellow dial. I think both of those look fantastic. And that's it. That's my impromptu Watches and Wonders episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it gave you an insight into the watches that interest me and that you'll see on this channel. If you like what I'm doing on The Watch Guys, please subscribe, leave comments and likes, and there'll be another episode next week.